My nightmare life, all comments, welcome. My current life is nothing short of a nightmare. Here's my story. My first real Reddit post. I'm 35 male, and my wife is 33 female. We were high school sweethearts, married for 12 years, and together for 15. We have three kids together, wonderful healthy kids. She grew up in an extreme Christian household where sex wasn't a topic discussion, but more of a taboo. You save yourself for marriage, husband, and figure out the rest later. So she did. Her first time was on our wedding night. We had a healthy marriage or so I thought, anyways, always made time to talk and listen to each other. I work away from home, so I'm gone every other week. We both have great jobs and are doing well financially. After we decided we were done having kids, we talked about breast implants, seeing my wife's body change so much for giving us our children, and decided to go ahead with surgery. Very nice indeed. It certainly helped my wife gain her confidence back about herself. I've always been into fitness and going to the gym, so he bought some workout equipment at home, and she began to use them. Wow! She made great progress and she wanted to share that with others, so she talked to me about wanting to make an Instagram fitness page to show her journey. Shared my concern with that and the negative attention that will bring, but ultimately decided to support my wife's new hobby. I get home from work one day on International Women's Day, a few months later, to my wife crying and telling me she needs to show me something. Someone had sent her a nude picture of herself, a bikini photo she had uploaded on Instagram saying they found it on a porn site and just wanted to let you know. When in reality, they used a nudie app to generate the image. This killed me inside seeing the pain that caused my wife. Talked about getting rid of Instagram, but this was not enough for her. To do that. Over the next few months, her posts changed from helping people and documenting her journey to showing her body off with less clothing August 2021. I have my own health concerns with left testicle pain that lasted for two months. Many trips to the doctor and having an ultrasound clears me of cancer, what a relief. In the meantime, my wife starts becoming emotionally distant, and I'm trying to figure out why. In October, I'm still struggling big time with my libido and drive her life. I get tested for low testosterone, and it comes back well below normal average. Doctor tells me they need. A second test before starting on hormone replacement. The second test comes back in November at the low normal cutoff limits, and they tell me they can't proceed with treatment and that I'm fine, but recommend antidepressants. Which I declined. That week, I get another blood test from a hormone replacement clinic and book in for consultation in early January. Early December 2021 rolls around. My wife loses her uncle and her grandmother seven days apart a major loss to the family. I come home from work early and take extra time off work to support my wife because she isn't doing well at all. It killed me inside having to go back to work after two weeks, knowing my wife is still grieving such loss. January of 2022, I get approved for my hormone replacement therapy and take my first shot of testosterone on January 13. Two weeks later, I'm already feeling like I haven't in a very long time. We go on a trip to Mexico for two weeks, and I'm having a time of my life with our children. My wife tells me that she can't believe the changes I've made in literally three weeks, and then I'm a 10 out of 10 dad and husband. A few weeks later, I'm at work again, and I'm reading articles on emotionally distant spouses and midlife crisis. I send her those links and she agrees that does sound like her. But she's not sure why. I then come across an article that read the top 25 signs your wife is having an affair. I'm reading this, and I'm blown away that my wife has 22 out of 25 in my opinion. I decide I'm going to confront her of this, but not until I'm home. March 10th, D-Day. Who would go out on a date night? And I genuinely had a great time. I sit her down and tell her I'm going to talk for 15 minutes and want you to listen, and you'll have plenty of time to reply. I read her the top 25 signs, and she says, wow. I can't believe you think some of those are me. I reply telling her this is the time to clear your soul and whatever has been bothering you needs to come out. I thought it was a drunken one-night stand from the summer. The tears start to pour, 
and the long silence develops before she tells me she has been having an online sex affair through Instagram, September 7th through December, showing herself to another man, lives overseas, while he pleasured himself. I'm in disbelief that she could do this, but think it's something we can reconcile over pretty quickly. I then tell her. If there's anything else that it needs to come out now. She tells me. This is going to kill us and cries even harder now followed by minutes of her not talking. I'm preparing for the worst. She tells me she is having an affair, a fair partner met on Instagram, and it started a week after her grandmother's funeral and only a few days after I took extra time off work to be home. It was only a few times, she said. It ended in January. As I come to find out, this is normal for only half-truths to come out and only as much information as to limit the damage and fallout effect of the affair. A few days of seriously talking all day and night with no sleep, all the details start to come out that the affair was alive and very much active until the night I confronted her of it. 1,000 of text messages and averaging 4 hours of phone calls a day. They would meet in random parking lots in the back of a truck, hotels, a fair partner's home, and the last time in my own home. The fair partner spent the night, with our three children sleeping upstairs while I'm away at work. Eleven confirmed times in two and a half months, but as high as fifteen to twenty as she can't remember all the dates she told me, she was headed to the gym, but in reality, meeting him in the parking lot, she has an IUD, no condoms were used. I asked her to pack her stuff and move out. The kids had the worst week of their lives. Here we are today both going to individual counseling and have a first marriage counseling scheduled for next week. She basically told me she had written me off and we were going down the path of divorce. Cheating is never justified. In her eyes, until I made a miraculous turnaround by my hormone replacement and this drove the guilt and shame even harder of what she was doing. She started her personal counseling while she was in the middle of the affair. There's been no contact with the fair partner since March 18th. She's regretful, remorseful, and wants to do anything to make this work. She is back in the house. She has been tested for STIs and HIV and pregnancy. She's reluctant to have sex or even kiss me, and through open discussions, she admitted she is having a very hard time getting over the fair feelings and the withdrawal from it. The fair partner, 33 male, has zero assets can't hold a job down and lives in an apartment with his mom. What about my needs? Obviously not wanting to be a doormat here. I'm not wanting this to work just for the children either. Questions, comments, concerns, all welcome. Cheers. Randy Barrett has her first comment. She brought him into your house. And had sex in your bed. There was no coming back from that. Imagine the level of disrespect. That's a big foo. No. A fair fog excuse to justify that. That's designed humiliation, probably laughing at you and your own house. Nah, man. She's gotta go. Miles Tag adds. I think it is a common theme in cheating cases that show that is not a thing of being weak, willed, or having a lapse in judgment but all about having a selfish personality. When the cheating partner is having a hard time, the betrayed spouse does his or her best to be there and help them recover. When the betrayed spouse is having any kind of problem, no matter how mild they jumped ship, you were there for her as you should. When those losses happened, when you were going through your testicular issue in low testosterone counts, she starts thinking, well, this is going to end in divorce. I should just start looking for something new instead of trying to fix the relationship. She would rather throw 15 years three kids together to the trash rather than put in some work. However, your health issues manifested in your relationship causing problems, they didn't come out of nowhere. You both knew why it was happening. And you were getting treatment for it. And yet she didn't have your back. She was just looking after herself. Luckily, it wasn't cancer, but if it had been, or if you were to lose someone in your family, and get depressed for a while, will she take time and make efforts to be with you and help you be better or will she ditch you and seek to have her needs met by any random follower? on her Insta? She didn't just bail her promise to be faithful, but also being there in sickness and in health, too. Want to bet what would happen if you tested for the other ones? If you lost your job and couldn't get another one, would she uphold the for richer for poorer one? 
This woman won't have your back when things go bad. Some Christian she is. Honestly, anytime people stay in a relationship and think things can be reconciled between them after infidelity, they end up having serious regrets 10 years later and wishing they had just left when crap at the fan. It's not worth staying. If she's reluctant to kiss you or show any sign of intimacy towards you, that's a red flag. She doesn't seem to be trying to fix what she broke. Not only that, but she clearly doesn't tell you the whole truth of guilt is still eating her up inside. She's still hiding things from you. Leave. Leave now. You're right. You do have needs, and you should always be someone's first choice. Update my, my nightmare life part 2. Much has transpired since my last post in mid-March. Looking back, I wish I took the advice of people on here who reached out and genuinely cared. The hardest part of accepting the reality is that all is lost. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way by my own doing. Reconcile was attempted between mid-March after I let her back in the house to the end of April. So many warning flags, giving compliments to other men at the gym in front of me, withholding sex list goes on and on. She pushes me out on purpose at the end of April saying this is so hard and that she needs some time to figure a crap out. I said, I agree. We need healthy time apart where we aren't seeing anyone. She ends up renting an Airbnb in the beginning of May, was reluctant to give me the address of the place, but ultimately does. I drove by one morning to see her repair partner's truck parked a block away. Not surprising at all. As I'm driving by, I see her and a fair partner walking out of the alley towards his truck. I turn around and pull up door to door. A fair partner is inside the truck. She didn't have time to get inside so she is hiding ducking down behind the tailgate. I rolled my window down and said, real impressive. You lasted one day on your own. I pulled at the back of the truck and she runs at the front and hides by the hood, so I left and cancelled her cell phone that was on my plan. Two days later, she shows up at the house with her bags packed wanting to come home, said she's sick of living this shady lifestyle, and say that's a good decision, but you're not welcome to stay here. Go stay at your stepdad's. She agrees. Mother's Day rolls around. She wants to do something with the family. I disagree. She calls a few hours later and invites me to a movie. This time, I agree. Well, I'll go back to the home and the kids go to bed. I asked her to leave, and she said she is tired, so she didn't leave and falls asleep on the couch. I go upstairs and see her old cell phone on the table so I decide to go through it, find evidence in pictures and messages of the affair, finally. I wake her up and confront her of it, she goes ballistic in long story short, police show up and she's arrested and charged with assault at 1 a.m. Three weeks of no contact and not allowed to visit the home, and when the charges are dropped by lying on her police report, she wants to meet. I agree. She wants to work on things. I'm hesitant but she's a mess, and I take that as a finally being remorseful. I rent my own place for five days and end up moving back home on the fifth day, May 29th-ish. Mid-June, things are going okay, but not well. Communicating has approved drastically, but there's no intimacy at all, period. She won't even kiss me. Her phone still has a password I don't know about. We are in bed one morning and at 6 a.m., her phone rings. She tells me it's her affair partner. She told me she blocked it, but then unblocked it. I said I'm sick of the crap and threatened to leave. She agrees to block again. I have all my lawyer paperwork prepared for separation at this point. I have a fire in the backyard one night. She's at a neighbor's for a glass of wine. She comes back a few hours later, and I danced with her outside for the first time in years. Try to kiss her. She pulls away. I'm like, what the F? Try to be intimate later, but it is so bad I ended up sleeping downstairs after. The next day, she forgets her phone, and I slide the screen down, but can't get into it, but shows email notifications from her fair partner, another dagger to the back. I confronted her. She lies and said she didn't message him. He must have gotten her email somehow. I go downstairs. Pull up her email, and read the entire conversation, that's been going on. 
for days behind my back. I show her she breaks down. I said I'm filing for divorce the next day. I leave. She calls me 15 times over the next hour. I don't answer. Text me to come home. She's having a breakdown. I return home hours later. She calls her a fair partner while I'm there on the phone and tells them it's over. A fair partner asks for my blessing to pursue a relationship with her if we don't work out. I laugh. She hangs up mid-June or July. She made some changes. It was very positive reassuring me. She is in this for the long haul, and then it could take years to get to the place we think we can I quit my job on the road and take a new position. To be home every night with my family? I start my new job on July 25th. She pushes me out again. We go for a walk. She says it isn't working. And doesn't think we can get there, but never says one time she wants a separate or divorce. We had a friend's wedding to attend that weekend but I got my new work schedule and couldn't make it. She reaches out to her fair partner again and spent the next three days with him after the wedding. I filed my paperwork. August, she was served. I listed our home and it was sold in one month, including possession date. Separation agreement was signed this week. I'm in a much better place over the last few months being free from this madness, which ultimately I created for myself, trying to do everything possible to help this woman, but she isn't the same one. I married 12 years ago. Obviously, and unfortunately. All at my expense. Everyone said she would do it again. I didn't want to believe it, but deep down knew what would happen. Kids are adjusting well to their new home with me, shared custody. And I focus my time on attention to them at all times. Not with her affair partner anymore, and he is apparently heartbroken. Recently, she tells me I'm a great man, great provider, husband, father, all the quality she's looking for. Says she knows she won't find another man with even 50% of what I have to offer. But she isn't sexually attracted to me. But hasn't rolled out getting back together someday. Going forward, I can live with knowing. I tried everything possible to work on. Her family unit. She did not, and that's something she will carry to her grave. Until next time, triple threat. Live May 6410 as the first reaction isn't sexually attracted to me, but also, so maybe someday oh, absolutely. When she can't find anyone else and you become plan D, tell her to. F off OP. That's an unbelievable lie to give anyone, man, or woman. Administrative ad 3880 ads. Stop talking to her about anything but the children. Seriously, just get away from her. She's toxic to your future happiness. I'm actually shocked you kept taking her back, as you said, you didn't want to be a doormat. Please do not ever go back with her. She's not good for you. She doesn't respect you. She doesn't value you. She's just telling you what you want to hear. She hasn't ruled you out because you keep taking her back. Don't you dare go back up? You deserve so much more. What does up need to hear? Let them know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on our space. Well, I can subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a barge, a variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.